Ho Jim here in Holland. Kromat, who's from Deutschland, which is Germany. And this fight isn't Thai boxing rules, but no, it's a fight under kickboxing rules. Which allows the use of low point kicking, but they have to use the uh, obligatory boots, that's the full contact boots. Not using full contact karate. Uh, as you can see, the fighters are wearing shorts, they don't use the wear the long pants. And uh, as you can see here, Lufat with the long hair, black shorts. And we have Chrome out there in the red shorts. Blue gloves. Michael Lufat, who's uh, renowned for fighting around the world. He's fought against Thai, he's a very tough opponent. As you can see, a very well cut, well conditioned body of Lufat, Michael Lufat, a tough fighter from here in Amsterdam. You can see that the fighter's using the timing very well. When one misses, the other one goes in very quickly. As you see, the referee will stop them, break them when they get into a clinch, because there's no knees allowed in this contest. Again, it's five three-minute rounds, this contest. On the clinch, when you clinch, you can actually punch as long as there's some boxing going on, otherwise the referee will break. And so you can observe the... Uh, the boots on the feet. I don't know who is it to protect, whether it's the feet or, or the uh, opposition. It's a derivative from Thai boxing. Uh, a lot of the countries, especially America, adopted this. They uh, they first invented the full contact karate, which they used to use the, uh, as you can see now, the, the boots. And they also used to wear shin pads. In fact, they still do now in, uh, in the USA. And where full contact is very big in that country at this moment. Here in Holland and uh, Europe, Great Britain, the kickboxing is still quite popular. And uh, quite a lot of students are practicing this. But as you'll see with uh, a lot of tournaments these days, the tie boxing has taken over. Which is much more exciting and there's a lot more use, a lot more weapons to watch out for. Whereas kickboxing, uh, you're limited. But even so, this country, Holland, and again England. That's got a beautiful high kick there. From a very good high kick. These two fighters are putting on some excellent kicking combinations. Blue fat, from out there, absolutely. Going for it, going for gold, boxing, hands working together very, very well. Again, two experienced fighters on this uh, build we've got tonight. All these fighters well matched and also well weathered. They've been around, they've had quite a few fights. And any uh, Thai boxing, kickboxing fans will recognize okay, most of these fighters, if not all these fighters tonight. And Luf out there begging his opponent on, just begging him to come on and fight him. Again, it's all part of the psychological game, this fighting game where trying to psych out your opponent, trying to weaken him psychologically as well as physically. Oh, good solid landing boxing punches there by Cromat. But Lufat, very strong chin takes those and just comes straight back into the action. Nice one too by Cromart with a leading body kick. And there we have it, end of round one. Nice slow-mo action with the hoop kick there from Cromart. Lufat comes straight back with his own. And into the next round. We're into round three now. Lufat dripping with sweat and a little bit of water from his corner. Oh, good high kick there from Cromart. These fighters sit in the phantom weight division, which is about 53 kilos. 
which is just uh, it's around the just under the eight stone mark. And there's the X kick from Chroma. These fighters trying to use a fine array of kicking techniques. Oh, solid shots from both fighters, and Lufat takes a good punch on the chin, but strong, very strong fighter. Good uppercut. Lufat on his toes all the time, just bouncing around. Keeping with the rhythm, the timing. But he's pressing Cromart back all the time. Cromart has got an answer for Lufat, and every time he moves, he's countering and attacking and while he's going backwards. Some fighters are very good at fighting going backwards. They don't matter. It doesn't matter where they are going backwards, as you can see here. Cromart just using a good, fine array of uh, boxing, using the spinning kick there with Lufat. Oh, yes, nice left to the face. I think work rate-wise, I think Cromart is actually doing a little bit more work here than Lufat. Lufat, they're probably the more powerful of the two. Cromart has got a more, more nice, nice front kick there to the face of Lufat. Nice combinations. And uh, at the end of that round, he just sinks to his seat, taking a well-deserved rest. And you see, again, some of those combinations put these two fighters apart. From others, yes, beautiful high renders kick there to Lufat. One of the uh, very tasty ring girls parading around the ring to tell the audience which round we're in. Obviously, a very nice reminder to tell us this is round four of a five round contest. And in fourth round, the two fighters are off. Use of the combination. Chroma. The Lufat there pressing and pushing. Trying to force his opponent back. Catching the leg, the referee breaks. Lufat, unfortunately, on a few of these rounds has been missing the target with some of these very powerful shots. A lot of uh, power in there, but uh, if they miss the mark, then they don't get scored, obviously. They've got to land, they've got to connect. Good pushing front kick. The Chromat, just good timing there. So the timing is essential in this game. This is definitely WK kickboxing at its best with these two. Showing even without the use of knees that this type of fighting is very, very entertaining. Oh, the head goes back there, Cromat, and the sinking hand, right hand. Lufat. Short of over cuts there from Cromat as he goes backwards. And Lufat now got his opponent on the ropes up in the corner. And the referee breaks them. And Lufat back in there, the hard, solid rights. Not enough for a standing count. But he's back in, he's pounding his opponent back into the corner. Lufat now seeing, sensing his opponent. A little bit tired, and he's going on it. And that's the end of the fourth round. Fifth and final round. Again, lefts and rights, legs and hands working together in good combinations, both fighters. Lufat, I feel, lost probably the first two or three rounds, won the last round easily. He'll have to show good form in this round if he wants to win. Just looking for that right moment. for that right hand, you can see him setting him up for that right hand. And there it goes, bang. The 
and the low point kick in. Cromart using it very effectively. Referee not allowing to hold. The right hand again. Luke Wright just setting him up and again. You can see him just holding that right hand up, ready, just like a cobra, ready to strike. And there again, there's an axe kick. Not too much power, but it's again scoring points. Lufat sensing his opponent, weakening in this last round, going forward relentlessly, just trying to get in with that big right hand punch. Fast and furious last round. Closing stages. Good front kick to the face. And again. And that's it. The end of the round, end of the fifth and final round between these exciting fighters, very small fighters, very fast fighters too. He's showing you know, that right hand that he was looking for all the way through the fight. You can see it again now, coming up, holding him there and then bang, right on the chin. A strong chin from Chrome out there. And coming back with his own two-punch com two combination. And yes, it's a draw. Morat Crumb out there. Michael Lufat, a draw. Crumb out there, not too happy about that. And this is set to be a long one. It's the world title fight at WK rules. 12 two minute rounds. And we've got Manart from the Majero gym in Holland. And we've got Monaco in the full power club. In Belgium. As you can see, the boots again, which are mandatory in this, uh, in these type of rules, the WK rules, which allows boxing to the head and body, kicks to the body, legs and the head. No knees or elbows allowed or holding and clinch work. And in the first round. See there the full contact pants, fighter with the yellow pants and the tie style shorts there. Where a lot of fighters have uh, come to use these days, a lot of kickboxing fighters, even full contact karate fighters, because they realize copying the tie boxes uh, that they're much more freer and much more sense of freedom when you're fighting and no restrictions to your legs at all. The word tie itself is actually means free. understand Muay Thai when they fight everything goes like a free form of fighting the heavier looking Monaco there looking quite uh, bigger in the midsection and much more fitter man out there from the Giro gym it looks like nothing in the ring often seen fighters looking very mean and awesome get knocked out by a much more mellow and meek looking fighter. So it looks a nothing in a ring. He's on the fighter's heart and mind. And that sort of work he's done in the gym. You can see the fighter here pressing his opponent up against the ropes. Right up to the end of that round. And again, so we've got our ring ladies showing which round we're gonna we're going into, which will be the second round of this fight. And they're off. Both fighters coming out very eagerly in the second round. Oh, a bit of a slip there on Monaco. Looking for that right. Man out coming with some good combination. One, two. Oh, beautiful high round nose kick there. Right to the head of Monaco and then down again to the legs. It's showing a good form of kickboxing or any form of full contact wing sport where they can go up and down. High and low, you can see it now working very effectively here. Go to the head, then back down to the legs, then to the body, back down to the legs, back to the head. Nice jab. Got him cornered here, this can be dangerous. He's going down, and the referee seeing that as a standing eight. 
And the fact we took a risk there. A little bit outclassed. And I can't believe these 12 rounds. As you can see, the referee has stopped the contest. Man out. Taking his fight, just continuous pounding against a less, a lesser opponent, Monaco. He just couldn't take that sort of punishment. <laughs> there we see that beautiful headshot there. Setting him up in the corner. Body shot right into the ribs. Obviously shooting right down to the boots and again the same spot. And then going to the head, which just finishes him off. Andre Man out there, very happy winner. The technical knockout, taking the fight. And his opponent there, Manaco. The runner up from Belgium. And straight into the next fight. Coming into the ring, we have Saito from the Aguni Gym in Japan. Saito, a very well renowned fighter from around the world, coming from Japan. Um, Japanese champion, and here we have the challenger, we have Vandenberg from the Majiro Gym in Holland. It's Tommy Vandenberg against Coyote Saito from Japan for a world title fight, WK 12 by 2 minute rounds. It's a long time, a long time of kickboxing that to be in there, 12 2 minute rounds. Remember, like professional boxing, they do 12 threes but they're not at one time even lifting the leg up. And when you're kicking, like these fighters are doing, when you kick, it takes twice as much energy to throw a kick than it does to throw a punch. So Saito here we have in the white shorts and Tommy Vandenberg in the red and white shorts. Saito, a very seasoned fighter. Been over to Holland quite a few times. More respected fighter here in the Netherlands. Good push, well timed. Seems opponent to throw the punch, ducks underneath and throws a nice little stepping push, taking his opponent down to the floor. Inside low kick from Vandenberg. Yes, and again, good timing there by Saito. Block it with the right punch counter. Good low point kick, and again there, Saito using that very, very accurate right hand. Put a bit of a grab of the leg, which isn't allowed in these rules. Referee, bit of a warning there. But he won't lose points. Oh, nice left foot. Around the jaw of Saito. Standing in the middle of it. Not enough to do in the standing weight count though. The referee seems to lose OK and lets him continue. And the end of the round there. And again, quite an exciting start to the fight there. Four fighters. There we see that classic left textbook punch from Vandenberg. Tommy Vandenberg there sinking that left hook into the chin. Start of the second round. There goes that high kick, beautiful. Slips a little bit, catches it on the arm and slips. At any time you can see these fighters are very, very keyed up to just let fly with the technique. A little bit of out of range techniques there by Saito on again. Bit of a slip and a throw there by Tommy Vandenberg. Making use of the many, many wide and varied range in the sport. Front kick from Saito. Nice low point kicking from Vandenberg. Good boxing there to Vandenberg's head. Saito, very accurate. But ball fighters, very accurate with the techniques. Ball fighters on the toes and ready all the time. Ready to block, ready to counter. And again, 
Referee here taking one point off Saito for holding the leg repeatedly there and taking the opponent down. So okay to knock the opponent down when you're not allowed to actually grab the leg and then take them down. So one point off Saito which won't be very good for him. He's going to have to find it a little bit harder now to regain them points that he's lost. And it's one point off each judge and there's three judges to the contest. Judges from different parts of the world. And there we see the end of the second. There you can see trying to explain to the Japanese second trainer about the grabbing of the leg. You can see it here. And he just grabs and lifts the fighter up and connects with a low point kick on the floor, which is again is illegal. Into the third round. Tony Vandenberg, a little bit, uh, I don't know if he's finding this floor slippy here tonight or his just balance isn't too good tonight. He tends to be falling on the floor and slipping quite a lot. Oh, three breaks. Doesn't Saito not obviously understanding. The referee being very strict here with Saito. But acknowledging it and uh, touching gloves. Low point kick from Saito. In Japan where kickboxing is very popular and this is what you're seeing in the ring tonight here this is kickboxing and not to be mistaken with full contact karate and again uh, there's that slip kickboxing is remember it's a derivative from Muay Thai Thai boxing and kickboxing is very similar in the fact the only thing is they don't use knees and they sometimes use these as you can see on the feet the moon boots full contact kicking pad uh, foot protection and uh, you saw just a few seconds ago spinning kick there of Vandenberg no effect as it was out of range quite a flashy technique powerful one two if ever does connect because there's a lot of wind up involved in that technique nice combination both fighters I would like to say what the, uh, the judges score in this fight and I would imagine it is close but I think that point off each judge perhaps has uh, left Saito a little bit behind in the stakes here and that's the end of round three start of the fourth round Fight is receiving one minute rest between each round um, and the 12 round by two minute contest. When they're fighting five by three, which is A-class Thai boxing rules, there is a two minute break in Thailand because they use the, the full elbow and knee to the head. And uh, over in the international, they have one and a half minute break. Between five by three and five. Fight, and this is the round where these two fighters, obviously they're gonna start stamping more authority to each other. We're about a quarter way through the fight, but obviously both fighters are warmed up now. It takes two or three rounds for them to get going. And uh, we're into the fourth round, so, so the action should start hotting up now. Into the clinch, but they will break because, as I say, there's no knees in this contest. Just kicking and boxing, hence the name kickboxing. Looking for an opening. Nice jab. Leading hand jab there from Vandenberg. An overhand right chopping punch there by Vandenberg. Missing its target. Saito there using good combination. Hands and legs together. left high kick by Saito, taking on the arms of Vandenberg. Good low kicks. Both 
fighters and ducking very neatly there underneath the left hoops. Right, all oh, nice little smile at the end of that round. Obviously quite pleased with himself. Into the action of the fifth round. Inside low point kick from Vandenberg. Low point kick can go to anywhere on the leg, remember. You can kick to the thigh, inner thigh, kick to the knee, back of the knee, the calf, the ankle, the shin, kick anywhere on the legs. And that is very damaging and weakening to your opponent. That's why these fighters, you know, any, any style of full contact fighter, let's go train the legs punishingly hard. Many, many rounds on the bags, on the tie pads, kicking, kicking, kicking repeatedly to toughen, strengthen the legs. These fighters, you can see the legs very well developed, very well cut up, very strong legs. Unlike professional boxing where they work on the upper body, uh, the legs obviously don't take the type of punishment that these guys take. They're taking nothing away from professional boxing, that's one tough game too. Points are scored the same as in professional boxing. Points awarded for, as you can see there, boxing to the head and body. Some good boxing too here from these fighters. Also kicking, which has been, it's been displayed. Uh, different array of kicking, which is ball kicking, body kicking, head kicking. And there's different ways of kicking too. You can kick roundhouse kick with the shin or with the instep or the foot. And there's front kicks, which can be done with the ball of the foot or the heel. Side kick with the same, or the flat part of the foot. Also, spinning kick, you can use the heel to the head. Roundhouse kicks to the head. Jump kicks, that can be flying side kicks like you see in many of the martial arts movies of today. There's so many weapons. You can understand why these fighters have to train so high. It's not just a case of sticking your hands out and punching. There's a lot more to think about. This is the sixth round now. Approaching the halfway mark of this 12 round kickboxing world title fight. Both fighters looking extremely fit at this stage in the fight, obviously trained for this distance. Tony Vandenberg, a very seasoned fighter from Europe, from Holland, and Saito, obviously, also a very seasoned fighter from the uh, Far East, from Japan, where kickboxing is uh, a very, very much practiced martial art and sport over there, a very big following, just the same as here in Holland. before, which is uh, like a side kick or a spinning side kick or a spinning back kick. And you see when you get the experienced fighters like these together, they will try a wide range of different techniques. Effective goal kick with that by Vandenberg. And Saito counting with his own low kick there. Hand right. And again, Vandenberg sinks that low kick into Saito's thighs. And a beautiful headshot. What a tiny headshot. Absolutely classic textbook. High around this kick. And I think he was out before you hit the canvas. And if he wasn't, the canvas would have finished him off. A beautiful. Round those kick. I'm not looking to see it again. We're looking at monitor. We can just get that back. That was absolutely spot on. To the chin. With the round those kick, you can see there. The fighter's been turned over. Take the gun shield out. And here we see it again now. You've just got to watch this. Beautiful as he dropped the guard, thought it was a low kick. And straight to the chin of the net, as you can see there. When any fighter fights, falls flat first. Face first onto the canvas like that. When he falls straight over, guaranteed. They're not going to get up for a while. And you see the gesture here. And the youth there getting the ring. 
obviously, the young family of Tommy Vandenberg being presented a bouquet of flowers. It's nice to see the other side to his okay. He's sat there with the uh, medical officers who just take the time with him, allowing him to recover first before they lift him. Got his bearings, got his faculties back. And the crowd here obviously well appreciated that, as you see by the MC now will be announcing that position. Tommy Vandenberg there in the sixth round, just halfway through the fight. Absolutely beautiful technique, knocking his opponent cleanly out with the goal. A KO, 100%. There's no 